Hey friends, my name is Ethan and I'm the founder of Nux.ai. Nux stands for New User Experience, where our goal is to help you guys build AI applications. And today we're going to walk through this architectural pattern called Retrieval Augmented Generation. And we build upon some assumptions that you have, mainly that you understand what a vector embedding is and how machine learning models encode an input to generate embeddings. If you don't yet know what that is, then uh, check out another video that I posted on vector embeddings in the Nux AI YouTube channel. And so uh, what we're going to do is walk through a high level diagram. I'll walk through what RAG is, why it's needed and why uh, and how it's used in production applications. And then we'll actually show some code in addition to a live application that is running a retrieval augmented generation uh, architecture. And don't mind the acronym. You know how developers love to come up with funky acronyms to, uh, to represent different complex things. So we'll call it RAG, but it stands for retrieval augmented generation. Uh, so first things first, like why would we want to use a RAG? Uh, well, it allows to enhance the contextual understanding of large language models such as ChatGBT and Llama. Uh, and there's a ton of other LLMs out there, uh, but ChatGBT is obviously the most popular. And so RAGs essentially allow you to expand the large language models contextual understanding of what you're providing it as an input. Uh, it allows you to scale beyond, again, that limited context window, which we'll discuss in a minute. It allows you to customize the responses and even find, it even facilitates your ability to fine tune the model's outputs, right? Uh, so let's dive into an actual, uh, like some, some live diagramming. I love to draw, so uh, I'll, I'll succumb you to my chicken scratches here. Um, so first things first, okay, why do we need a RAG, right? So uh, most LLMs, ChatGPT included, have a, uh, a limited context window. And what that means is you can actually only provide a, a certain number of tokens to ChatGPT at, at any given point, right? I don't know what the actual number is, but let's say it's 5,000. So this means that we'll say token is a word, and if you want to understand what a token is more, I have a video on vector embeddings. It's in the Nux.ai uh, YouTube channel, as well as the Nux.ai uh, website. Uh, so ChatGPT has a limited context window as determined by the number of tokens that you can feed into the LLM, right? And so let's say we can only feed 5,000 tokens at any given point to ChatGPT, right? And so what that means is when we exceed the 5,000 tokens, let's say uh, we have this massive corpus of text, let's say we're feeding it, I don't know, the entire Tom Sawyer novel. And once it exceeds, once it gets to 5,001 uh, tokens, then you're basically shifting the context window uh, down, which means everything above those, uh, uh, that one token that it exceeded the 5,000 tokens by, it forgets that, right? And so what that means is we need to make sure that the LLM is getting everything that it needs to generate an answer that we are expecting, right? And so just to summarize, LLMs have a limited number of tokens that you can feed to it at any given point and this is where the need for retrieval augmented generation comes in, right? And so again, if you refer back to the vector embeddings uh, video, you'll understand that uh, objects, we'll say an apple in this case, gets converted into a vector. And a vector, like we discuss, is an array of floats that the computer understands is a representation of that object. And that's what we're storing in a vector database. And we'll walk through what a vector database is in a different video. 
right? So we have our objects and our objects represent vectors. And let's say we have a uh, thousand of these objects and each of these objects has, we'll say 10, 24 dimensions, right? And so we have, we'll say we have 6,000 because we're exceeding the, co the context window. We have 6,000 objects that represent different, or 6,000 embeddings that represent different objects, right? And because we can't actually feed 6,000, let's say apples in this case, to ChatGBT, we need to devise an architecture that only grabs the documents, which represent apples, that are relevant to my question, right? And so let's say, we want to know, uh, we'll say, here, I'll, I'll type this out. How many apples are in a orchard? Right? Okay. So this is a question that we can pose to our system. How many apples are in an orchard? And so what then we have to do is we have to encode it into an embedding, blah, 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 okay? And so then we have this embedding. We then do a, uh, a nearest neighbor lookup, right? A KNN lookup. And uh, again, if you refer back to those previous videos, you'll know that uh, there are a ton of different KNN algorithms out there. There's cosine, Euclidean distance, uh, dot product, there's a bunch out there. And depending on your use case, you might find that some are better than others. Uh, and we'll walk through uh, in a different video what those trade-offs are, right? So we've converted this question into an embedding, right? And then what we need to do is we got to grab all of those previous embeddings. So remember, we have all of these 6,000 apples, we have 6,000 vector representations of apples. That's my uh, vector representation of apples. And then what we do is we say, okay, which vector representations of apples in our database, in our, uh, in our vector store, are most similar using Euclidean distance, we'll say, which ones are most similar to the embedding that is generated from this question, right? And then what we wanna do is take those, we'll say the top N documents where N can be five, 10, but remember it needs to be within the context window of the LLM. So we have the top N documents that are returned from the KNN lookup where we grab our question, we convert it into an embedding, we take that embedding and look up all of the similar embeddings and only return the top N documents, right? And so then what we do is we send those top N documents plus the question to our LLM. So the top end documents plus the question is the extent of the context window. And this is actually how we're able to circumvent that limited context window that LLMs uh, succumb to. And there have actually been a ton of studies, and I'll, I'll link to them in the article, uh, but there are a ton of studies that show that when we exceed the context window of the LLMs, they actually erodes their intelligence. And that makes sense because if you think about what an LLM is, it's a transformer. Transformers are kind of modeled around our, the same synapses that we have in our brains. And when we try to multitask and do all of these different things at once, our ability to both remember and do things at any given point erodes. So it totally makes sense that the ability to do a lot more things at once 
erodes as we try to do more and more things. And so this rag is really just like a filtering mechanism to give the LLM only what is most necessary to answer this question, right? And this at its core, I mean, it's, it's super simple, but this is one of the more popular architecture patterns in the, uh, in the AI development space. So I'll just summarize everything real quick and then let's dive into some code. Uh, we've got our question. And once we have our question, we use an encoder, a model encoder. We generate the embedding. And then we take that embedding and we compare it against all of the other embeddings. And remember, we have to use the same model for both of these. Because when we train a model or when we use a new model, all of the embeddings from the previous state or the other model are completely irrelevant. So there's a lot of challenges there, which again, we'll talk about in a more 201 uh, level uh, video and explanation. So we have the question, the embedding from that question, we do a KNN lookup, we get all the similar documents that are embeddings from our data store, and then we only return the top end documents plus the question to our LLM. And that is a retrieval augmented generation architecture. Boom. All right, so let's dive into some code. Uh, this is the, actually the same code, the same Jupyter notebook that I use in the vector uh, explanation, but I added one section at the very bottom. So what we'll do is I'll, I'll run these individually. So I'm just importing the libraries, uh, converting this corpus into a string uh, or an array of strings, embedding each one. I've got my question. So again, we've got our question right here. We're generating the embedding from that question. And then we're getting the top end documents. Uh, here I'm getting all the documents. Uh, but what we'll do right here is I'll, this API key will actually be destroyed. So I'm not worried about you stealing it. So I know you'll let me have it in the comments, but not good practice. Don't ever share API keys. Uh, so I'm using the uh, request library and I'm grabbing the top five documents from this lookup right here. And again, this lookup is sorting by the most relevant documents given that question against the corpus. And so we're taking all of those top five documents and we're creating a massive string, right? So if you've used ChatGPT, you know that you enter inputs as strings, right, as chats. And so we give it the question, right? The question above here is how many islands are comprised of Japan? So we give it the question and the top five documents that are returned from the KNN lookup. And I think here I'm using cosine similarity, right? So we grab those top five documents and we feed that as context. And then we try to clean up the response. And I'm just saying, hey, you're an AI agent. Make sure that you don't make anything up. If you don't have the answer, politely respond, do not or I do not know. Uh, and this is actually the same content uh, or the same context that I provide in this application and I'll show you in a bit. And then here is the uh, sentence completion uh, URL and we're using the GPT 3.5 uh, model, right? So let's run this and see what happens. Cool, okay. So we've got a really interesting response. Japan is comprised of an archipelago of 6,852 islands with the five main islands being uh, these islands. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce them to offend people. And then you can find more about the Japan's islands here. That's interesting because we have the first answer right here, right, in document one. And then we have the second answer right here in document two. And so what ChatGBT is doing with the RAG architecture is it's taking the results from top one and top two, and it's filtering the other three and saying, maybe I don't need this for this response. And it's summarizing the answer. That's the magic of the RAG. We can filter out all of the noise so that we don't need to do, uh, we don't need to exceed that context window. Because imagine we're trying to search across a million 
of these documents. You can't give an LLM a million uh, documents or even tokens. Because remember, it has a limited ability, just like us as humans, to understand uh, and parse information. Right, so here's a live app application. Uh, it's a, an app that I've built called Kali.ai. And what I did is I actually scraped all of the content from the Tesla.com website. I took the HTML pages, I took the PDFs, I took the pictures, generated embeddings from all of those, and then provided this little question and answering interface. So what you can do is you can ask questions like, how much is a Model Y, right? The Model Y is one of the uh, vehicles, and we'll say uh, vehicle. And so what it's doing is it's first doing that vector search lookup, and then it's returning, and these are those uh, vector search responses from the database. We have three individual documents that all have their vector representations. And so the KNN lookup is saying, okay, which documents are most similar to this question? And then it's feeding those as context into ChatGBT. I'm using the same model as what I have in the code. And it's feeding those as context to the ChatGBT uh, to the API, and then I'm returning the response. So we've got an answer. We even have a URL. We have a link to the response. And so this is allowing us to overcome the hallucinations that ChatGPT is often succumbing to. We're providing it cold heart facts, sources, so that it knows, okay, when we're providing an answer, only provide answers that are within the sources that I'm providing, right? Uh, so that is the Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG architecture. It's super cool. And I actually think that it is the gold standard, the, the baseline of all AI applications, at least at this point, because there is no... Uh, there is no research that finds that exceeding the context windows of these LLMs or even any models is actually improving performance. So because we have that capped window, we always need to make sure that when we're sending a request to the API, the LLMs API, we need to ensure that it only has what it needs in order to give us the most accurate response. And there's a ton of other use cases beyond just a, a simple Q&A interface like I have here. You could do product recommendations, you could do uh, music search, you could do video understanding, video analysis. There's so many use cases and uh, I'm really, really excited to help you guys develop it. Again, uh, I'm cataloging all of this content on the Nux.ai website as you can see, we already have the vector embedding content produced. Next, we'll have the retrieval augmented generation content produced. And then we have got so many other uh, tutorials, guides, and really platforms to help you guys build your wildest AI dreams. So if you've got any ideas for the next pieces of content, be sure to comment. Uh, I'll provide my email. Really want to help you guys build what... Uh, what you're aspiring to do. Thanks again. My name is Ethan. And again, it's Nux.ai, new user experience. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys later.